Great, thank you. Hi, I'm Betsy Sewell and I am head of marketing at AWARE. And we are going to talk about how you can be your um, leadership's most trusted advisor with AWARE and Yammer today. And with me, I have one of our most valued clients, um, Larry Glickman. So Larry, I'll just let you share a little bit about your role at the URJ. Okay, hi everybody. My name is Larry Glickman. I am the director of the Reform Movement Marketplace at the Union for Reform Judaism. And as, as part of that role, um, we I oversee a shared services program for our congregations, but I also oversee an external Yammer network for the lay and professional leaders of our congregations where we have almost 16,000 users. That is a very large Yammer network. Can you maybe talk a little bit about why the URJ decided to implement Yammer and what life looked like before? Sure, sure. So we we implemented Yammer around 2014, and for about 20 years before that, um, the leaders of our congregations mostly communicated on a series of listservs literally run by a chiropractor in Long Island in his free time. And it certainly didn't provide us with the uh, knowledge base, with the resources that our congregations uh, really needed to have. And, and, and beyond that communication amongst themselves, we had to really rely on websites and email in order to push information out to them, uh, which which worked fine, but again, it didn't really uh, provide us with a good way to engage with them, to help them work through the issues at hand. So after a couple false starts, we finally did launch our external Yammer network in 2014, um, which is how we found ourselves where we are now. That's great. And I imagine there are a lot of companies who face similar challenges um, if they don't have a network like Yammer in place and, and just being able to communicate with their um, employees and, and the communities at large. How would you say that URJ, the URJ typically uses Yammer on a on a day to day or, or you know, weekly regular basis? Sure. So we use Yammer in two ways. Uh, we use the we use a home Yammer network for staff, and um, we use that for staff. Uh, there are collaboration opportunities there, and and we can share information with staff there as well. And then in our external Yammer network, which we call the Tent, um, that's where not only we provide a place where the leaders of our congregations can connect with and rely on one another uh, to, to, to talk about concerns that they have, challenges that they have, and that we can be there to help move those conversations along. And we also use that as a place to share our best practices, to share the resources that we've made. And so as folks are having conversations about some of these key issues that they face, not only can we help move those conversations along, but we can respond with some of the best practices that we've created along the way. So, so yes, we still, you know, that's an easy trap we often still fall into. We like to push information out still, but along the way, we realize the power of a platform like Yammer um, to really engage with folks, to talk with them, to learn more along the way that that email and websites just don't provide. Yeah, we've, we've found that with many of our customers, you can almost consider Yammer like a little bit of a digital water cooler, right? So it, it gives a space for individuals to connect and engage, whether that be about work or other events happening in the world. Do you have any tangible examples maybe that you can share of, of how your organization has used Yammer to connect? Sure, sure. So the um, discussion groups, <clears throat> excuse me, that we've created in Yammer are really based around primary areas of concern in congregational life. So everything from worship to communication to membership recruitment and on and on. So folks know they can go to these specific groups um, to, to create, to uh, engage in conversations around those 
key issues that are of concern to them. Um, it's really also been such a powerful platform for us to share information in time of need, to respond to current events as well. In fact, just this last week, uh, the software platform that so many of our congregations use uh, to manage their membership and to run their websites was the victim of an anti-Semitic attack, which affected a lot of our congregations. So as soon as we were we learned of that event, we were able to share that information out. Um, a couple years ago, there was a tragic shooting at a synagogue in Pittsburgh. And within the day that that event occurred, staff was in touch with each other on our staff Yammer network, and we were able to carry that over into the tent Yammer network as well. People just needed a place to go. They just needed to know that there were others out there that they could find comfort and connect connection with. Um, so lots of ways that we've been able to use that space. Yeah, that, that, those are really great examples, just both across, you know, being able to continue business as usual, as well as just dealing with things happening in the community. And um, we found that that Yammer really does that. And, and we all know as practitioners that you need your employees engaged with one another on a deeper level. And in your case, your congregations in order to be more productive and more effective in their roles. Let's. Um, maybe do a little time shift and think back to last spring. How did you see right. conversations shifting as COVID-19 started to permeate um, the news and all of our communities across the United States? Um, you know, what was top of mind for, for your organization? And isn't it interesting to think back to where we all were a year ago from now? Yeah. And to think yeah. it was really and, and that's when we saw we began to see discussion of this mid to late February of last year. Um, we saw we 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 were able to stay aware of of terms like covid and covid-19 and people starting to express their concern about these things. And, and I'm very proud to say that one of the very first posts was from the URJ and, and that, that, that we were able to share information out right away. Uh, uh, um, a really great advice and guidance from the CDC and, and the little that we knew then we were able to share with the, with our 16,000 users right away it wasn't quite that much then but but close and um so then as we went into march um activity in the tent really peaked because people just didn't know what to do and the thought that we had to close our congregations down is just in such conflict with what we do at our congregations, working so hard to welcome folks in. And we needed to share that um, information and that expertise about, about A, how to keep your safe, your, your, your place safe. Uh, B, how to close down and really what that means. How to keep engaged with your membership, even if they couldn't walk through the front door. Um, so really late February into mid-March is when we really saw things uh, pick up there. And when we saw the need to, to share that information that was going to help everybody through these times. Yeah, that's interesting. So we saw across um, many of our customers uh, an average of a 300% increase in activity just in March within yeah. um, platforms like Yammer. And it sounds like the URJ and within the tent, um, you were able, to, you you experienced much of the same activity spikes. Is that is that accurate? Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. And um, uh, and, you know, even, even, and, you know, we weren't so concerned with what our analytics looked like then. It's very, very interesting and useful to be able to go, to go back now. But then we were all just wanting to share that information that needed to be shared. We just wanted to help our congregations 
get through this and remember what we thought. This will last a few weeks. This will last a couple of months. We just didn't know. Um, but but we just needed to be able to pivot right away and and get that information that they needed to have. Sure. And how did you know, you know, which topics were most relevant and important? I mean, there were there was a lot being said about COVID. Um, did you rely on your gut? Did you have um, some specific themes that you were able to quantify? What did you use? Sure, sure. So it, it's it's um, it's a very easy to thing to think that you can just glance at your homepage newsfeed and really appreciate a sense of what is being talked about in your online space. And to an extent, you can, but you're not going to see it all and, and you're not going to really have a tactical sense of what is being discussed in your Yammer network. And that's when we could really lean into AWARE. And AWARE could tell us the topics that were being discussed, uh, where they were being discussed, and how everybody felt about what was being discussed as well. We could tell, we could take the temperature of the room. We knew how everybody was feeling, and it's really rewarding to go back there and know that the sentiment of our Yammer network was really pretty even back then. People weren't getting very negative on us because we because they were getting the information they needed to get from us. And we were able to confirm that through the topic reports that we were able to run in AWARE. Um, and, and, and there was there was a and, and, you know, this is what we go for. This is what we shoot for. There was a sense of community. And we are all in this and and we need to help each uh, each other succeed. And AWARE really helped us confirm that we were going along the right path there and that we were doing it right. Yeah, and 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 certainly you you saw their needs and, and the discussions change over time as we realized we were in for the long haul. And this was not just we're going to be home for a couple of weeks. See you. See you uh, next month. Um, yeah. how, did, how were you able to shape the conversations within Yammer or, or just respond and, and stay engaged over, you know, what's now been almost a year? Yeah. And, and you know, it's interesting as a non Yammer related indicator that we saw, I said that I, I also oversee a shared services program as well. And we have a discount code for Zoom. Um, that was that the usage of that literally increased by oh, almost a thousand percent. And so 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 people were talking about Zoom. People were talking about how can we best connect with folks online. They we needed to lead the way to pivot for them to doing all of this stuff online. How to teach school online, how to lead worship online, how to just make sure people know we didn't forget about them online. So as as we kept our eye on the AWARE tool, we saw the trending topics that had begun to appear. We knew that people were concerned about Zoom. We knew that they wanted to find ways to share information with the leadership of their congregations. We knew that they wanted to know where to find hand sanitizer. Uh, so, so these were all things that AWARE helped us do and helped us to re respond to based on on um, how often they were discussed in our Yammer network. Sure, and and now you know as many organizations are starting to formulate their, um, we'll say back to work or in your case back to worship plans. Um, what what do you think is top of mind for for the community now at this point? We've done worship all along, but I really like that phrase. I may take that. <laughs> um, uh, so, so our, our congregations have become experts in doing this work online, and um, they they're doing more prof professionally produced events. They're doing um, more on YouTube. They're beginning to explore other coll collaboration platforms as well. One thing our congregations are having a hard time in that if they do a live stream of their of their worship online, YouTube will often shut them down because they're using songs that somebody owns the copyright to. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. And even though this is worship that they're just putting out into the world, this is something that we learn through aware that's being talked about in our Yammer network. People are worried. How can we still broadcast our worship out there? And um, as we are getting into the spring, uh, the URJ also runs about 17 summer camps as well. And we are very much planning on having those camps this year. Our congregations are very much planning on how to reopen in some way, in somehow, and they need the resources and and to know how to do that well. Uh, we know that, A, because we know what's happening in the world, but also, that's confirmed by the fact that AWARE tells us that, um, and 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 so we are able to respond. Yeah, that's that's great. We love to hear that. Um, you know that you're able to validate what your gut intuition is telling you that your um, community cares about with actual data, and to really understand how they're talking about it, how they feel about it. And in this case, you know there is a little bit of uncertainty as to what life will look like, and that that's valid, but with that information, you're able to respond more thoughtfully. Yeah, and you know, it really goes beyond the being able to go to your, to the leadership of your organization and say, we're seeing lots of posts about this in the tent we or in our online space. This is how I think we need to respond. It's one thing to say that. It's a whole other thing to be able to show them the analytics from your space, to show them the hard data and numbers itself and say, we know, we know 100% that this is what people are concerned about. This is what people are talking about. Mm -hmm. And this is this can help us to shape our response. Yeah, exactly. Um you know, I think we're probably about up on time, but I do want to just recap a couple of important points that I think our, our audience will appreciate. Um, and, you know, I, again, I appreciate the audience for sticking with us. Um, and, you know, we talked about how digital conversations are at an all-time high. I know, Larry, that you guys have seen quite an increase within your own communities and across all of our customers, we've seen an average of a 300% increase um, you know, after the initial lockdown and, and that's leveled out, but it's still significantly higher, 184% more messages. That's a big volume and it's more people talking more often because in the reality, this is how we connect now is, is via platforms like Teams and Yammer um, and other digital communication tools. And you've shown us, Larry, how you can use Yammer to really just share information and form, and form connections with a variety of groups across you know, different topics. You have communities to talk about Peloton and safety and security. And um, you know, this is Yammer used correctly can really bring uh, a community together um, to help drive engagement and, and just that actual community, in this case, your worship community. Yeah. Yeah, and one of the great things is that they can create their own groups. And so if they ride the Peloton bikes, they can they can create a group for that. If they like to bake at home, they can create a group for that. And we've really seen lots of success there. Yeah, that's great. We we all need that digital water cooler and that that deeper connection beyond just getting day to day work done. Um, and and you know, from your perspective, just having this ability to really understand what's top of mind, whether that's with employees or with you know your various congregations and being able to respond better and know where they may need additional support where they may need additional reassurances or just information and maybe somebody just to commiserate with in some cases and you know by by leveraging aware you do have that ability to really understand what themes and topics are trending in these conversations and and because of that you're able to empower leaders. You can get that authentic view of employee sentiment or of the sentiment of the conversations happening within your congregations and really just guide leaders to better, more strategic communications. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Larry, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you joining us and to everybody watching, I you know appreciate your time as well. We are happy to answer any questions. And if this is something that should pique your interest, I am sure there are plenty of uh, ProServe IT representatives who would be happy to answer any further questions offline. Great. Thank you very much.